So I want to talk about energy, particularly the energy that is in your food. And the reason for this is because food affects your mind and body in more ways than you may know. For instance, I've seen people, and you probably have seen this yourself, a person will be acting quite casual and then they'll start slurping down a Red Bull or Monster or some energy drink with isolated caffeine and other things and the person changes. They become jittery, easily agitated, aggressive. They're trying to do 10 things at once. You ever notice that people who drink a lot of coffee, well, I should say too much coffee for their body, can be quick to anger? And it's probably due to the amount of copper in coffee. It's too much for their body. And that is what this is all about. It is about food affecting your mood, affecting your body and mind, the energy. Every time you eat sweets, how do you feel? Don't tell me it doesn't change how you feel. What is it doing to your body? What pleasure centers does it hit when you sit down to that warm cup of hot chocolate or ice cream? Even more conjuring, herbal tea, the aromas, the flavonoids. You see what I mean? So wouldn't it be important to treat all food with this respect? Should we dive in to consume something that our body doesn't need or benefit from for the sake of pleasure? Which often leads to feeling bad in the end anyway. There is a balance. We should try to understand that what we ingest is going to affect us one way or the other. You are probably wanting to always, more often than not, to be choosing food that you know will make your body feel good. You're eating energy. Does what you eat affect your mood? How to choose foods with mood-supporting nutrients. Food and your mood. The best meal to enhance your mood is one that combines complex carbohydrates with lean proteins and colorful produce. For example, complex carbohydrates from whole foods, like sweet potatoes, rolled oats, beans, and quinoa, can increase availability of the feel-good chemical serotonin in your brain. Protein consumption from foods like fish, beef, chicken, turkey, tofu, beans, eggs, and unsweetened yogurt has been linked to higher levels of dopamine and norepinephrine, which are brain chemicals that play a role in your mood, motivation, and concentration. Fruits and vegetables are high in vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants that nourish your body and have also been shown to boost happiness. Now, we could sit here and make a list of foods that are healthy for you and foods that are unhealthy. That would take a lot of time. And it would take a lot of time. But it is not the nutrients I really want to focus on here. It is the energy of the food we are eating that I want us to consider. For example, when you are at home cooking, do you put love into what you are preparing? Think about this. Have you ever eaten a meal someone prepared and although the food may have looked appetizing, when you ate it, the taste was off-putting, almost like a sour taste, like the food was bad, right? This happens a lot in restaurants. You often have workers that don't want to be there, they're tired, they're sick, they may even hate their job, the customers. And all that negative energy is affecting the energy of the food they are preparing for you. 
Now compare that to getting a home-cooked meal from someone who put time and effort and love into it. Not only does it taste better, the food is more satisfying to your body. Let me tell you something, folks. I have worked in several venues that serve food, and the window that they put the food up on to be served, the workers will develop this habit of arguing through that window. The server is yelling at the chef. The chef is yelling at the server all over your food. You get that plate of food, and your food has just gone through trauma. That is that sour taste, other than the food just being legitimately rotten or expired. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the energy coming off of the person preparing the food, actually causing the food to instantly go bad. I mean, it looks good, it smells good, it doesn't taste right though. And if that energy can transfer from a person to your food, to you, can energy be transferred to the food while it's growing or being farmed or raised? Think about chickens. They are actually quite empathic creatures. And if you are the owner of chickens and you value the happiness of those chickens, you are going to make sure they are properly fed that they are properly cleaned and treated for disease. You're going to make sure that their environment is safe, clean, and natural. You're going to make sure that your interactions with those chickens are great and loving interactions. On the other hand, if you are a chicken farmer who, who's pissed off his wife left him because he's in debt from raising chickens because of the corporations that govern his business, and he's keeping all these mean, dirty chickens all cooped up in their own feces. He's walking in their pen. It's so crowded, he's stepping on chickens, kicking chickens. There's chickens walking around with broken legs, broken wings, broken beaks, and some of those chickens aren't alive anymore. And in many cases, that's what ends up on your plate, those chickens. And all that hatred that farmer had for those chickens all that energy ends up in the grocery store. If you've seen the results of the Emoto rice experiment, if you've seen the results of the shape power pyramid experiment that I presented on this show not too long ago, you understand that the energy surrounding food or even flowing through it affects it. And that energy can be manipulated to affect it negatively or positively. This is one of the reasons you bless your food before you eat it. If you don't, you should at least try to express the positive feeling of gratefulness upon what you eat. If you do believe in God, you should be thankful for that. I strongly believe that doing so neutralizes anything that may have been wrong with that meal. Does that make sense? You eat three meals a day, that's three times a day you are communicating and showing gratitude toward God. It is three times a day you are putting positive gratitude energy out into the universe. How many of you know what food irradiation is? I'm sure you have an idea in your head, right? Well, let's see what the FDA has to say about it. Because you know you can always trust the FDA. Irradiation does not make foods radioactive, compromise nutritional quality, or noticeably change the taste, texture, or appearance of food. In fact, any changes made by irradiation are so minimal that it is not easy to tell. It's not easy to tell. If a food has been irradiated, why irradiate food? Now listen, this is important. There's only five here. Prevention of foodborne illness to effectively eliminate organisms that cause foodborne illness, such as salmonella and E. coli. Preservation to destroy or inactivate organisms that cause spoilage and decomposition and extend the shelf life of foods. Control of insects to destroy insects in or on 
tropical fruits imported into the United States. Irradiation also decreases the need for other pest control practices that may harm the fruit. So this is enough radiation to kill insects on contact, right? Delay of sprouting and ripening. To inhibit sprouting and delay ripening of fruit to increase longevity. Isn't that altering the energetic structure of the fruit? Sterilization. Irradiation can be used to sterilize foods, which can then be stored for years without refrigeration. Sterilized foods are useful in hospitals for patients with severely impaired immune systems, such as patients with AIDS or undergoing chemotherapy. Foods that are sterilized by irradiation are exposed to substantially higher levels of treatment than those approved for general use. Those of you who have seen the video I did concerning microwave ovens, it's the same thing here. They use x-rays, gamma rays, electron beams on your food to radiate this food for the reason I just stated. Oh yeah, and to make you sick. This is one of the reasons why they have to label it as such. Think about it. Your raw meat, some of it, your raw fruits, and imported fruits and raw veggies have already been cooked by radiation. You think it's raw, but it's dead. There is no life left in it. The radiation killed the bad and the good. Bless your food, folks. Bless your food. Speaking of blessings, it's that month again. I mean, with the mask and everything else going on, it's Halloween every day anyway. But Halloween is coming up, and that means bags of candy are being stocked. Now, I have mentioned before the events of the occult practice of cursing Halloween candy before it's stocked on store shelves. It is an urban legend that may or may not be true, but I don't recommend buying it. You can do what you want, you know, some of you still celebrate this holiday. Still doing the candy thing, still dressing up. Listen, when I was younger, I participated too. I've done the cosplay before, but I had my fun and I wised up. And I don't care how you think Halloween started. It is the darkest holiday period. There is no disputing that. I've seen both sides of this and I can tell you my life is so much better without involving myself in that dreadful event. You see how these candy companies like to troll us? Beware, try if you dare. You see what I'm talking about? Those of you who eat this stuff, good luck with that. I mean, is it just me or does that read like a warning label? What about the color of your food? How does that work? Well, different colors, of course, vibrate at different frequencies. Therefore, foods of different colors vibrate at different frequencies, affecting different areas of the body according to those colors and what the food does. For example, plums are dark violet fruits that can be turned into prunes, right? Prunes are usually the color purple or violet. What do prunes do when you eat them? They help your digestion, right? Which is also the solar plexus area associated with the color purple. Do you see? Color is a good way to determine the natural energy content of what you are eating. Red foods tend to have good supplies of beta carotene and lycopene, and even red meats. Radishes, red peppers, red chilies, kidney beans, tomatoes. Orange foods and spices are good antioxidant foods, good sources of vitamin D, turmeric, pumpkin, carrots, orange peppers. Yellow fruits are sun fruits that have that citrus, vitamin C. These foods are good for the liver and regulating hormones. Lemons, bananas, yellow apples, egg yolks. Now green is the most vital. These are the cleansing foods. These are the mineral rich foods. These are the cellular support foods. 
leafy greens, lentils, legumes, green grapes, oregano, broccoli, mint, etc., etc. You have blue foods, plums, blueberries, seaweed has a lot of blue energy. Then there's violet, lavender, purple, grapes, eggplant, turnips, plums, thyme. These are good for the mind and the gut. I believe this is the food color associated with decalcifying the pineal gland. So this is just a list of ideas to have on you as you shop around for energetically healthy food. Go on a rainbow diet, one that includes multiple colors of food in each meal. Bless that food, eat it, and see how you feel. These are very basic, basic concepts, but they are also scientifically complex concepts. Food is energy, and it can change yours. There is more to come. Please be sure to check out woodwardentertainment.com and the Woodward Entertainment Store. Keep this message in mind in your day-to-day -day routines this week and enjoy your meals. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I love you all. Stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.